Okay. So, welcome to my session about GraalVM and its support for tools. I work on uh, for Oracle Apps and uh, on the debugger support in GraalVM. So, the following is for informational purposes only. You should not make any decision on this. Uh, so, first I will talk about GraalVM and the uh, polyglot uh, world that uh, is associated with that. I will explain Truffle AST interpreter, which is um, an essential part of uh, GraalVM uh, for languages. Then I will describe instrumentation for tools, how tools can plug into GraalVM. And uh, we'll uh, then have some demos where I will show how GraalVM works and how, how the tooling are, um, look like. So GraalVM consists of several components. Uh, the core component of GraalVM is just-in-time compiler, which is an advanced, uh, very efficient uh, compiler that replaces C2 in, in JDK. Then it contains a Truffle framework, uh, which is uh, an interpretation uh, framework for ASTs. Uh, language are written as AST interpreters, and um, they provide the AST nodes to the Truffle framework where they are efficiently um, partially evaluated and compiled. GraalVM uh, uh, provides uh, by default uh, JavaScript uh, integration at LLVM. It's a bitcode interpreter. And, but you can install other languages as well like R, Ruby, and Python. The next component uh, for GraalVM is SDK API. It's uh, for embedders. If you would like to embed uh, GraalVM into your existing application, you would use the SDK API that will allow to uh, work with the GraalVM and run um, guest code on it, and etc. Then it contains Oracle JVM runtime, which adds uh, Java libraries and uh, garbage collector and things like that. And one part of uh, GraalVM is ahead of time compiler. It's a native image generator which lets you compile uh, bytecode uh, to a native image. So you can uh, create a native application from your Java application. And uh, the advantage is that it's possible to compile also language interpreters. That means that you can create a, a native runtime that will execute JavaScript. Uh, uh, sources or other language sources or all these combined. So here is in the picture what I was talking about. Um, you have a just-in-time compiler that compiles uh, the um, languages that compiles to bytecode like Java, Scala, Kotlin. Then you have um, interpreters for a bunch of other languages and um, all that is processed by GraalVM JIT compiler, and it's possible to embed all of that into OpenJDK, for instance, where you can replace the C2 with uh, GraalVM JIT compiler. And we also provide uh, Node implementation where V8 is replaced by GraalVM that uh, allows you to run all the other languages in a Node as well. Uh, we are adding uh, GraalVM into Oracle database. It's possible to add it into MySQL, or, or it can be run as a standalone application. So now, uh, what Truffle interpreter is? Uh, Oracle language inter uh, implementations are written as AST interpreters. That means that uh, there is a unified uh, AST representation in Truffle nodes, and uh, all you need to provide a language integration is to write an interpreter that will translate uh, the language source into the Truffle AST. Then Truffle cares about the specialization of nodes, partial evaluation, and compilation. That uh, all has the advantage that there is a very low overhead uh, in uh, language interoperation because uh, the AST representation is the same for all languages. That means that you can seamlessly execute one language from the other as the AST is, is just one for, for all of them. 
Also, there is an instrumentation support uh, built into the truffle, and it works on the AST level. That means uh, that when you install an instrument, it plugs into the AST, and it can be specialized and partially evaluated with the code. So the instrumentation essentially became part of the code, and that means that there is nearly zero instrumentation overhead because it's, it's all compiled together. And tools are attached as uh, node wrappers to, to the AST. So again, here we see that in the picture. Initially, you will have uh, AST nodes initialized. Then, uh, depending on data that are flowing through these nodes, uh, the nodes get specialized for strings, for double integer at whatever types are there. Or there, there is some generic representation after that stabilizes, uh, the truffle creates the, um, uh, the specialized nodes, and then it's partially evaluated and compiled all together. How tools are plugged into that is, uh, is here. Consider a node. That node is replaced by a so-called wrapper node that uh, delegates to the original node and also to a probe node. That is something which can be used to attach the instruments. Here are several subscription nodes attached to that probe, and that delegates to client nodes that are provided by the instrumentation, by the tool that uh, you want to plug in. So for instance, if you have a debugger and you submit a breakpoint, you select, uh, you find the correct node which represent that uh, part of the code and to create a uh, uh, node that represents the breakpoint. And the breakpoint get a notification when the node is started to be executed. Uh, also when the execution of that node finished, it uh, gets the return value or when an ex exception was thrown from the node execution, it, uh, it intercepts the exception as well. Uh, this, uh, for instance, allows to have very fast conditional breakpoints because the condition can be part of the AST and it's executed together with the code, so there is near zero overhead for the condition execution. Uh, the important thing for Gravium 2 is that they are language agnostic. They attach to the Truffle AST and they should not care about the particular language that the node came from. How it finds out where it actually should attach or what the nodes are about when it cannot find language. Nodes have tags. When a node represents a fun function, it, uh, it's tagged with a root tag. When uh, the node represents a statement in the language, we have a statement tag for that. And uh, similarly, for, call for calls, for expressions, etc. So this is how tools find out <coughs> what the node represents. Then the node have a source section information associated, um, the source file it came from, and line and column number information. So again, when you going to submit a breakpoint to some line uh, in, in some source file, you find that from, from this note information. And this all is language agnostic. So when instruments decide where to register, it, finds, uh, it needs to define which tag and which source section it, it should attach to. This is uh, declared in advance, and when the note is created, the instrument is notified about that, and uh, the wrapper note is created about that, uh, around that note, and uh, the instrumentation is attached. So in order to see how it works, I'll show you some demo. We start with uh, cross-language debugging in Chrome. So I have prepared a few files in JavaScript, in Python, in R, and in Ruby. We can run all of that in a, in a Graal VM. I'll show you the, the run script. We'll, we'll 
use Gravium RC11, and we run a node with uh, inspect when we b will break point at the first execution. So we'll attach Chrome to that in order to can use Chrome inspect. And here we'll see GraalVM is uh, available to attach. Do you see that? Yeah. So we are suspended at the first, uh, first statement here. It's a call to a weather uh, method. This is a very simple sample application uh, that computes a weather regression model of, uh, from some cities. We have a database of cities and temperature of them. It's some artificial database. And uh, you are going to create a regression model out of that. Um, it started from Node. It's a JavaScript application, but to compute a regression model, um, it's, it's not very convenient to do that in, in JavaScript, so we are using R for that. So we submit a breakpoint where the model is created. Maybe first I can show you that this um, JavaScript file is loading. Uh, if we step into that, is loading Ruby file. It's loading also R file, and there is some, some Python file written here as, as a string. So we can continue to that breakpoint where the model is actually computed. It takes some time to, to load the model and initialize the languages and so forth. And when the breakpoint is hit, we can step into, into that and uh, we are in a R source. Here you can see on the call stack that uh, I came from JavaScript and the JavaScript just calls the R function written here. If you look at the arguments, it gets some functions which came actually from JavaScript which called this, uh, this R function. So we can step through some, some R code for a while, and eventually we'll get into the place where the JavaScript function is going to be executed. When we step into that, we are back in, in the JavaScript, and we see on the call stack that from the JavaScript, R was created and R was executed, and that called the JavaScript again. So the call stack shows you all the stack of the languages. Okay, we can go back back to R. We can continue to the... Here you can see the local variables. So Chrome Inspector has fortunately no problem to show you R variables <laughs> here. And if we get back to the JavaScript, we see the return value here. It's an R list which is essentially an array, but it's, it came from R and R list. So JavaScript here gets some value from R, but it knows from the generic representation that it's an array, so it had no, no problem to find out the length of, of that R list. Because it's an array, it, it uh, knows that it has some size, and JavaScript nodes has that uh, lens is a property of array, and it show you return the size of that array. In a similar way, we can step into other languages. We have Ruby here, so we can step into Ruby. Again, we can uh, debug the Ruby here in the, in the Chrome Inspector. So no matter of what language is there, the tool is able to work with that. Here we can step into the Python script and again debug a Python script, including local variables and, and everything. When we are back here in the JavaScript file, we can uh, look uh, 
to the local variables. So for instance, here we see a function which came from Python and which has the Python description. We have a weather model from Ruby. We have cities from Java, city service uh, Java object here. And here is a create model function from R. So we have all languages here available, all languages interpreting, and you can debug all of them at uh, one place. So that's all from Chrome Inspector. The next demo is going to be some preliminary uh, implementation of LSP. We have a preliminary uh, integration with uh, Visual Studio Code. So I will start an LSP server here. So uh, yeah, this is an LSP instrumentation uh, which is soon going to be a part of uh, GraalVM. Uh, currently, it's um, it's in an experimental version, and it's um, provided for a so-called simple language. We have a testing language for GraalVM, so that uh, we we do not need to deal with all the complexities of other languages. But this is something to uh, test tools with and to showcase how how GraalVM works. So. At least you are sure that there are no existing language servers for this uh, simple language, so <laughs> it's uh, it's served by by this Graal LSP server. And now I will go to the VS Code client and uh, run a sample application in in Visual uh, Source Code, Visual Studio Code. We'll run this uh, this LSP client here, the LSP client plugin, and it should open. Yeah, here it opens a sample SL file. That it's it's written in the simple language, and uh, it it has connection to the LSP server. So, for instance, if you select some uh, variable name it finds all the locations or places when the variable is read and when it's written to. This is provided by the language. The nodes are marked as uh, that they are writing some variable or they are reading some variable. And from that, the LSP integration finds out locations of variables and if they are read or written to. There is also code completion, so you can see the local variables and, and the other things that you can call at that location. So this is a preliminary version of, of the LSP server. And the file non demo is in NetBeans. Yeah, NetBeans Gravium integration. Here I have NetBeans 10. It's the latest version that was released uh, and late in the December last year. And it has a built-in support for uh, GraalVM debugging. So I will run the demo that you already saw. It's, yeah, it's here. But this time I will not run it with the Chrome Inspector option, but uh, with uh, standard debugging options. And so it's listen on uh, on the address eight thousand. I will attach the Java debugger to that. And yeah, it it does something. In order to see what it does, we pause that. Here in the main thread, you can see that it's doing something with uh, Trefo nodes, so it's executing something on the GraalVM. And for GraalVM debugging, we have a special icon here uh, that is relatively new that's a toggle pause in GraalVM script. That means when you toggle that, it will suspend 
as soon as it uh, finds out that some uh, script is executing in Gravium. So we can continue the execution and wait for this section to, to actually find this out. Yeah, and we are at the beginning when our script is executed. Here on the stack we see the JavaScript file and we can do the very same debugging that you saw in uh, Chrome Inspector here in NetBeans. Yeah, we can continue to a breakpoint. We can step into an R function. And here we see the, the local variables and everything. The advantage is that uh, this is uh, Java debugger. That means that you can switch from the script view to Java view. And here in the stack trace, you will see all the nodes that are executed and that actually interprets the language. That helps uh, language implementers to see how uh, the nodes they wrote were executed and yeah, that provides the insight into, into how Truffle works. And you can see here also the probe nodes, the tools integration. Here the probe node was entered and there is stepping node associated that comes from debugger. The node was entered, so we get on enter event. We can step and we were suspended on a, on a step. So that's all from me. If you have some questions. <laughs> yeah, question. you were first. Uh, what is the expected way to learn Truffle? Because I read everything on uh, the Gao website and uh, I still don't understand half of it. Uh, of course, uh, you need to read some random papers like Truffle Memory Way Out to understand how to start it inside. Uh, do, do you plan to write some uh, complicated tutorial or something? We are still working on documentation and uh, currently, unfortunately, the, probably the best uh, way how to start out is uh, to look to the simple language implementation and um, just uh, it's see not how, so simple, how really. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> sort of yes <laughs> comparing to other language implementations it's it's very simple so yeah uh, but we are working working on the documentation definitely yes okay I, I can help you with okay you are welcome <laughs> yeah. uh, I have a question about the, uh, uh, the the Chrome demo was very interesting because. Uh, I'm wondering how, how you mangle all the different types from R, from JS, from uh, you actually had a icon with C, C++. Mm -hmm. How does all this um, looks fine in the Chrome debugger, which expects, I think, uh, JavaScript? Yeah. Uh, Fortunately, maybe. it's quite tolerant because uh, it also expects TypeScript or CoffeeScript or other other languages. So they apparently do not have uh, anything specific to JavaScript that they will blow up if they get another language. So this is why we can do that. I mean, Ruby dictionaries, Python dictionaries, they are very different. Uh, yes. Ruby has, you know, uh, the anchors, like uh, they're not, not keys, they're actually um, um, static things. Uh, yeah, the, every, every object from every language provides uh, its uh, two-string implementation. So we take uh, the string representation from the language, how the language sees that object. But it's still language agnostic in, in terms of tooling. Yep. But understand correctly, the, the compiler is faster than the Java compiler, the just-in-time compiler. Are there any plans to improve the Java runtime to get as fast as... Uh, uh, there is a project to move uh, actually the uh, the Graal just in time compiler to OpenJDK. And it's faster than this? this in in many situations, yes. Okay. Not not in all of them, but in in probably vast majority of cases, it's faster. Okay. Yeah. And then they're planning to integrate it also in the JDM. Yeah. yeah, this is this is sort of the plan. So we'll see how it how it works. <laughs> yep. How do you manage to, for example, in Python? Um, in JavaScript, there are uh, double. You should repeat the question. Uh, sorry. 
uh, yeah, so I'm sorry. Uh, the question was how um, how we deal with types. For instance, in in JavaScript there are doubles, but in Python there are, there are other types. Um, for example, if I Um, JavaScript has uh, big integers, so JavaScript can convert that to, to big integer. Uh, the idea is that uh, there are there are some there are primitive types which uh, flows freely through languages, and there are, there are object representations uh, that uh, when a language gets object from some foreign language, it uh, delegates operations on these objects to that foreign language. So when it needs to find out a property of some object, it asks the object, give me that property. And it's up to the Python code to, to search uh, the object layout and, and to provide that property. So if that uh, object doesn't uh, represent a primitive value, uh, it's, if it's uh, quite long, it can uh, delegate all the operations on this value to, to some methods on, on that object. And uh, JavaScript that um, delegates that to, to Python. And also, when you speak about Python, JavaScript, and Ruby, you mean that, that the, or, or both the, your own implementation of the translator of uh, uh, JavaScript source code, the Python source code, to the ASP for other yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The the languages uh, need to be uh, updated with with the latest version. So, for instance, uh, in in JavaScript or in Node, when there are some new features added, we we need to keep up with that. But uh, it's not that hard because all that we want we need to upgrade is uh, the interpreter, not not the runtime or or other things. Just the interpreter, and that's it. So. Uh, that allows us to bring new JavaScript features faster than uh, V8, for instance. And uh, the same, uh, same way, I, I guess that it's not possible to use, for example, in Python, there are many libraries in the C Python at least uh, that use uh, the C bindings. Uh, I guess it's, that it's not possible to use them. So it's just possible to use a pure Python code. Um, there are some libraries uh, distributed with, with the languages. For instance, in R, we have many libraries are distributed and regarding python uh, i'm not really sure but uh, but we definitely uh, work with numpy or uh, have have some integration with numpy so yeah this uh, these languages are not in final state yet uh, javascript and llvm is is uh, final it's complete but these other languages are in progress they are mostly complete but not 100%. So, yeah. Time for yes. one more question. Yes. So, if you, uh, and when you put your probe, your uh, debug probe, for instance, is it possible to uh, <coughs> change the tree as a, as in hot code replace, basically, um, by this method and regenerate the tree? Let's say you modify a function in JavaScript. Yeah, yeah. The question was when there is a probe, if it's possible to. Uh, replace uh, that uh, uh, to when the code is modified. Uh, yes, uh, the instrument uh, can freely attach and deattach, and then we uh, transfer back to the interpreter mode, change the nodes layout, change the AST, and then after that stabilizes, stabilizes it's compiled again. So, yeah, there is just the, the optimization at that location the nodes are changed as they need to be. Uh, for instance, if you remove a breakpoint, the, the breakpoint that represents the node is removed, so the, the, the node structure changes. So it's transferred to interpreter mode, and then after it stabilizes, uh, it's partial evaluated again and, and compiled again. So. Thank you very much, very interesting. Okay.